Well, Marie Ferdinand Harris, without a doubt, is one of the greats in LSU athletics history. She's a member of the LSU Sports Hall of Fame. I'm going to brag on you real quick, Marie. You went in the 2007 Sports Hall of Fame, first round WNBA draft pick, three-time WNBA All-Star, and of course, she's married to Cedric Harris, who was an LSU baseball great in the Great days of Skip Bertman, late 90s and into the uh, first year of the 2000s when uh, they were a national champion in 2000, and he was a national champion in 1997. Marie, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. It's a good morning. Good morning. I'm excited about this interview. I've watched several of, several of your interview, and I've been pumped up, waiting on my turn to make my um my appearance on one of your um, podcasts. So I'm excited about this interview. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm flattered by that. I'm flattered to be chatting with you. I, uh, my first year at Channel 9 was, was 2001. I started in March and, mm -hmm. uh, and I, got, I, I watched you guys went to the second round. You were way up there in Purdue, right? Oh, yes. Well, there in Purdue. I'm very tough environment. But you know what? We had, we had a really good team and a really good chance. So we were up for the fight. <laughs> That's right. I, I, I was thinking to myself this morning, I was daydreaming. I was thinking, what, what would it have been like if we would have had Tamika at the point, Simone on one wing, one wing and Marie Ferdinand on the other? Yeah, kind of that, um, that whole extra year they're giving the seniors these years. These <laughs> days they're giving seniors extra years. Like I was hoping for one of those when I saw Sylvia Files coming in, Simone Gustus right behind me, you know, Tamika Johnson. I'm like, wow, what? I mean, we could have used an extra year that year, for sure. <laughs> I see you're from Miami. Did you know Sylvia when she was younger? Or, I mean, I have to know it's a big place and everything, but. Um, well, the story is, um, the, we went to the same high school. We're all from the same high school in Miami. You know, we have this coach who was a security guard at the school and literally would always volunteer his time and come in and teach us basketball fundamentals. And um, we literally bought into a system. And the school we went to was pretty much primarily Haitian dominated school where the school district was a F school, not really um, the best place to put your, your child to for a good education, but it was the area we lived in. So that's the school we went to, but with it being having such negative vibe, the coach helped change that culture, change the culture of the school where we later bought into a system and started to dominate the sport and became really good, became a powerhouse every year winning championships and having some of the greatest players ever. Myself, Sylvia Fowles, Shalonda Robinson, Flo Williams, we all come from the same school. So I leave, they're all younger than I am. I leave to go to LSU and from there on, it became one of those things where, well, if Marie can make it to a university, He's so kidding. So it became where all the kids are excited about going to D1 and, and getting those opportunities to where it became almost like a pipe, pipeline for LSU. They yeah. started to get all the players from that high school. After I went, Sylvia Faust followed, Shalonda Robinson followed, Flo followed. So they had their little Miami connection with the whole LSU, um, getting all the best players from Miami Edison. <laughs> That's awesome. And the great Flo Williams, she's still at the PMAC uh, working yes. there and doing great stuff. And uh, so, so Marie got it started. Well, um, what's it been like for you just to kind of watch this resurgence with the LSU uh, women's basketball program? And I know I've heard from a lot of former players who have appreciated uh, head coach Kim Mulkey, you know, getting them back involved. I, I saw you this year and they had all those players on the floor. They had players going back to the 70s, maybe, uh, you know, as well. Yeah. It was it was great. Well, that was a fun, fun atmosphere to go back to alumni weekend. You know, I've gone back several times, but this time reminded me of actually the Sue Gunner, Bob Staffy era, you know, where it was easy to get these alumni to come back. They wanted to be a part. And it gave me that same feeling again of, wow, the program is back. The program is back, you know, and everyone wants to be a part of it. You know, I, I just always said, man, like the past five years and even talking to Verge, you know, and I'd always tell him, cause we have a good relationship and I would always tell him, um, man, it'd be so awesome. If we could get Kim Mulkey to be our coach over there. And it was so crazy how that literally, I felt like I spoke that into existence because like, you know, it became a reality. 
you know, any opportunity you have to have a Kim Mulkey with that winning tradition, you know, her fire for just the game itself, everything that she's brought to the game as a player and as a coach, and she gets it. And the most impressive thing to me is she understands the value of relationships. You know what I mean? You can call her. She's going to give you a text right back or, or call you right back. You know what I mean? She's just very into people and understand that as good as she is, as of a coach is, she can't do it by herself. So she values everyone and she wants everyone to be a part. And she just understands the importance of relationship. And that's so impressive to me. Great stuff. And Bob Starkey's back. So Bob Starkey was, uh, you know, the right-hand man of many different LSU women's coaches through final four trips and all that. Uh, he was the, he is the defensive, like, mastermind and stuff. What, what makes him so good on that side of the ball, so to speak? Well, you know what, I'll use my story, for example, you know, coming out of Miami Edison Senior High, we're loaded with athletes. And one thing we know how to do is literally get to the basket, you know, penetrate, but that's pretty much all. We don't really know much. We're so fast. We could just blow by people and going into LSU and coach starting one of the assistants at the time, he literally showed me how to play the game and how to make the game a lot more simpler, how to make it just more fun. He taught me the value of spacing. I had no idea how important spacing was. Starkey introduced me to the world of spacing. And once I got a glimpse of what spacing is and what it can do to our, to our team and myself, I was a huge fan of what he was preaching every day, which is spacing, spacing. Um, he taught me, you know, the important, you know, in the terms of life, we say you want to work smarter, not work harder. And that's what Coach Starkey taught me. He taught me how to play smarter and not harder. So i huge fan of Coach Starkey because he's one of the great minds of the game. You know, any program who have uh, opportunity to get a Coach Starkey is, I mean, they're lucky because of what he's going to bring. He's going to bring all himself to a program. He's worked wonders to so many of us as athletes, help us to own our game by just understanding how to think the game, not just play the game. So he's been very influential in my career and coach Starkey is to this day one of my favorites you know he was there at my wedding he was there when my son passed he's just been a part of the whole journey with me um he's more than a coach you know he's a father figure he's a friend he's he's Bobby I call him Bobby and he laughs every time you know but that's who he is to me so I'm just so grateful that we were all we were able to get him back that's been something I've poured in his ear over the past three years I've said coach Starkey man it would be so amazing for you to finish off at LSU for you and Sherry his wife who was amazing to end up at LSU and 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 help the women get back to where they once was so another dream came true another thing that I spoke into existence now coach Starkey's back you know so <laughs> great it's to see him back in that purple and gold oh uh, that's a great great words by marie ferdinand harris um well let's talk about um uh, your, your event coming up uh, uh your son cj and uh, be like cj has kind of been the the slogan right um for, yes. for a while now uh you, you you told me that uh he he treated everyone the same uh and that's got to be important these days with bullying at an all-time high and the social media and yes. you know i'm not as pretty as her i'm not as popular as him all that stuff so so tell me about uh, what's happening okay so um we've established the be like cj foundation um we wanted to do this to continue you know his legacy to continue the work he was doing here on earth you know cj was a four sport phenom actually getting ready to commit to LSU this spring. You know, he was just that good only at 14, you know, everyone wanted him, but as great of an athlete as he was a better individual, CJ cared for people, you know, in school at junior high, find CJ sitting with the kids who were special needs. Those were his lunch buddies. See, you would find him sitting with the kids who were being picked on. You'll find him building up the kids who weren't as popular. He wanted people to feel like he was feeling. He wanted them to feel like they had meaning in life. They were also rock stars in their own ways. He was the one, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, you'll catch him warming up with the kid that don't play. You know, that was his stretching buddy. He just had uh, uh, just a natural 
act of just building up people and wanted to help people who were down, who were who were who maybe who may feel left out, not included. He was always trying to bring people in. So that was CJ. You know, he he just exemplified, you know, the student athlete, the character trait you want your kid to have. You know what I mean? That he exhibit, he exude those character traits. And and our goal was to establish something that was going to continue his legacy and continue to help speak schools and, and help other young people become more like CJ. So our number one goal is to go out to schools and to be like CJ, share the importance of being humble, being kind, being respectful. It's all how you're treating people, you know, being the ultimate teammate, whether that's in sports or in life, you can be an ultimate classmate, workmate, but that's what CJ was about. That's what he cared about. You know, we just recently did a special Olympic event. And the reason why we did it was CJ was very fond of special Olympics. His buddies participated in the Special Olympics here. Our mission, Cedric and I, is to make sure we continue that lifelong with the Special Olympics and be there and, 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 and help and support these young people. Every year we go out and we present the medals. You know, we bring CJ, be like CJ, and bracelets. We just want to make sure we're there and we're continuing the great work he was doing here on Earth. Awesome. Um, and so as you and I are sitting here talking, we're in early May. So the event, uh, you know, somebody might watch this a year later or something, but, but the, the event is coming up this Saturday. Uh, and so what are the details of the event that you want people to know about? Okay. So we have our first run walk event in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We thought it'd be so fitting to bring it back to our alumni school. We still have a lot of colleagues there have a lot of friends there and you know we love LSU and we thought it'd be so fitting to get all these school-aged children to come out and enjoy a fun fun environment community community like environment where they can not just run walk but also participate in all the fun event activities we have after we have face painting we have a photo booth we have a DJ coming in we have a bunch of that's being catered, and we're looking to get the LSU staff there, women's basketball staff, some current former athletes. So we want all the kids to come out, and we want to do a guest. We're going to have some guest speakers, and we want to pour into these school-age kids, elementary, junior high, high school. The goal is to make this a school-age initiative where we get to share the importance of being kind, being humble, being an ultimate. Um, those, that's what the event is for. Um, and that's what CJ would have wanted. You know, that's what he was doing. He was pouring into people. So we want to continue to pour. And we felt like, you know what, starting a run walk for school age children would give us that platform to, to continue doing what he would have want us to do. Is there a website or something that you would like to promote or a place where people can go to get all the information? Yes, we, you, anyone interested and want to see all the amazing work we're doing with the Be Like CJ Foundation, you can go to BeLikeCJFoundation.org. Um, it's an amazing site with lots of amazing testimonies. We have some from Shaquille O'Neal. We have from Chris Paul. We have testimonies from um, Coach O, who CJ was just at the, before he passed, he went to the football camp and formed a great relationship with Coach O. So Coach O leaves a testimonial. testimonial. So we have some great people on, on the website talking about CJ. And we have his principles. We have, I mean, if you want to learn about CJ, the kid was just, just amazing. Angel is what I now know he was. You can definitely find information about CJ and the upcoming run walk being held this Saturday, May 7th, um, right in front of walk-ons. Good deal. Uh, I hope it is packed. I know it will be, and uh, it will be the start of, of many uh, uh, moving forward. Um, I, I hope you don't mind me sharing. As you and I are talking, as soon as we're done, you're going to go to a um, you know, religious uh, event, uh, yes. faith, you know, Bible study, right? Yep. It's called BSF. It's an international program where you go in, just a women-led program, and I mean, it's all over. They have them in India. I'm up. It's just all over the states. It's yeah. something with super enriching. You know, it's how I get fed every Tuesday, every Wednesday. Um, so it's a great organization. Been doing it for 12 years now, and um, looking forward to continuing my um, my my participation in BSF. <laughs> well, let's let's uh, end there. If you don't mind me asking, your faith. 
um, uh, what, what you've been through and everything, some people would say that is the ultimate test of faith and um, to not go towards anger and, and some of those things. Um, what, how important has your faith been to, uh, to keep you as strong and vibrant as you are today? Well, had I not had my faith, I don't know if I'd be able to be doing all that I'm doing. You know, since CJ's passing, I've been the most motivated. I've had the most strength that I never even knew I had, you know, but I tell my husband all the time, I tell Cedric, hey, we have to stay busy because we're the most ripe for Christ right now. We have to keep speaking to schools, pouring in people, people. We have to be that vessel. You know, the biggest thing I've seen is throughout this whole year with CJ been done, no one's been comforting us. We've been comforting people. <laughs> you know, people come in sad and they leave revived, you know, and they want to be like CJ and they want to know Christ and they want that strength that we have. They want to know more. They want that hope. So I feel like, wow, he has given us this opportunity, you know, to go out and and help more people and still hope, you know, now we're looking at doing retreats for grieving parents. You know what I mean? Just the other day, I'm hearing about the kid who passed from Zachariah, I think it was a track athlete, if I'm not mistaken, or a swimming athlete is what he was. And my heart broke for the family. And what we wanted to do was, you know what? We wanted to send person person personalized care package to these families, but we want to be able to help grieving parents. We want to be able to instill hope in all these schools. In the, in the schools with these kids who don't have hope. So God has given us an amazing platform to continue the work CJ was doing, but I couldn't have done that. We couldn't have done that without our faith, without having strong faith in Christ. Um, so we're, we're just on fire for Christ. We see that he's a great God. He makes no mistakes. When CJ, when somebody like CJ lose their, lose their life, I don't look at it as a loss. I look at it as a gain because CJ got the most important principle, which is to love people. And that's what he did. He loved people. You know, CJ would tell me all the time, mom, people are crazy. And I'm like, what do you mean? White people and black people, mom. And I'm like, why CJ? He said, because why is it so hard to get along, mom? It was so natural for him to just love people from all backgrounds that it, he, it couldn't make sense. He couldn't understand why it was so hard to, to get along and to love people. But that's what CJ was about. And God has given us amazing strength to be motivated into helping other young people, other young, other adults to be more like CJ, have those same um, quality traits. You know, we had his funeral last year and I'm telling you, it wasn't even, a, it, it didn't even feel like a funeral. It felt like a revival, like literally everyone walked out there feeling revived. I didn't even want it to end. It was so good, you know, but everyone left there wanting to be like CJ, whether it's a parent, a teacher, a principal, it didn't matter. They all wanted to be more like CJ. They wanted to find out how can I be a better father? How can I be a better mom? How can I be a better teammate? How can I be a better person? And that's what CJ does. And it's so funny because I love sharing CJ's message his message starts with CJ, but it always end up a Christ message. And that's the beauty of it. So we're, we're so pumped up that God has chosen us. We feel more empowered that we get to do this, that he trusts us with this. So I feel empowered every day having to do the work of Jesus through CJ. Well, I tell you what, Marie, I've cut back on the coffee, so I can't match your amazing energy this morning. But um, I, I feel enlightened. This was an awesome visit. Yes. Um, God bless you. God bless Cedric and your family. Uh, yeah. And I have this one quote. I don't think I can read it all because it's, it's so okay. long. Sue okay. Gunner, the great Sue Gunner, on Marie Ferdinand at the time. Marie Ferdinand is about as complete as any coach could ask for. She is what most coaches envision a two guard to be. She is cat quick with great leaping ability. Her floor <laughs> speed is extraordinary. And her decision-making capacity has improved every year. Her athleticism allows her to do some things that are hard to believe until one actually sees her perform. Without a doubt, Marie is one of the most gifted players I have ever coached. And she is one of the premier perimeter players in the country. The late, great Sue Gunner on Marie Ferdinand. So, yes, love it. Uh, love it. Love it. Yeah. My only regret is to be, to be all that Coach Gunner just quoted there. I wasn't on fire for Christ when I was just that person Coach Gunner was describing. And now 
I'm on fire for Christ. And I always say, man, and I had this much fire for Christ along with all those that I just said, man, I would have won so many championships, but I feel like God now is going to give me opportunities to win the greatest championships, which is helping people know who he is. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> Well, Marie, um, I can hear the frogs over there, too. I thought they were here, but uh, they're coming out, right? It's, it's uh, the country living. It's the country <laughs> living. They're all coming out at this time. The birds are chirping. The frogs are. It's this country, good country living. Real quick, you're in Ashdown, Arkansas. Is that right? Ashdown, Arkansas. Um, right Jane near Hill. Texarkana, Texas. Two hours away from Dallas. One hour and a half away from Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah, Jaden Hill, the pitcher, that's where he was from. Jaden Hill, our cousin. Yep, that's exactly where Jaden is from, Ashdown. Yes, the great Jaden Hill, who exemplify us a, a great athlete as well as an awesome individual. We're so proud of Jaden Hill. Marie, I love this interview. I'm going to let you go. You can be late for Bible study. I don't want to be responsible for that. So We, we don't want to be <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> Take care.